can really throw you for a loop, but you won't hate enumerate. In fact, it's one of my favorite Python functions. Basically, a for loop is where you go through a list of items and you say for every item in this list, do something. And with enumerate, you add a counter onto that. So each time you go through the for loop, it's adding to this running tally. And you can in you can access the, the count, so like the index, as well as the item in the list. Um, and so here's just a quick look at how it works. Standard caveat, I am not a computer programmer. Um, I just have picked up some Python to analyze my own data, and this is one that I found really, really helpful. So say you have a list of things, in this case, pipette, centrifuge, beaker, flask, and in Python, you have when you have a list, you enclose them in brackets, and then there's a comma in between all the different things. And because these are strings, these are just words, I have to put these um, quotation marks around them. But if I press enter, I've assigned things to this list. And so now I want to print every item in these things. And so a for loop lets us do this. It says, okay, go through this list. For each thing in the list, print the thing. So it's going to print out pipette, centrifuge, beaker, flask. Now, what happens if we actually want to count? Like what number, how many times did we have to go in through this for loop? How many items were in there in the list? Or where was each item in the list? We want to know the index, the count. We can do this using enumerate. So enumerate, if we run enumerate on things, what it's going to do is it's going to give us a tuple which has the um, the count or the index and then the, the thing. And so in this case, what it's doing is it's saying, okay, the first time it was zero and the word was pipette. The second was one, it was centrifuge. The third was two, it was beaker. And the, th and the fourth was three, which is flask. And Python's a little confusing sometimes in that it starts at zero. Um, but as we'll see later, we can change the start to get it to start at any number we want. But it's going through and each time it's giving you the count number as well as the item that you wanted. And you can actually access each of these individually. So you just need to assign them to variables. And so you can do for I thing, or you can use any words you want. They don't have to be I and thing. They can be anything, um, but I is commonly used. And so for I thing, it enumerates things, print I and print things. And now it's going to say, okay, zero pipette, one centrifuge, two beaker, three flask. And I could, I don't have to just be printing them out. I could be doing any sort of thing with them. And I, I can access each of these individually. This is much simpler than other ways to get an index. So in other sorts of programming languages, you might do something like this, where basically you have to initialize the count. And so you'd start by saying, okay, I is zero. And then for e print thing and things, print I and print things. So it goes through this loop. But you want to tell it, okay, well, the index, now each time the index is going to, we need to advance it by one because we've gone through it one time already. So the first time it'll be zero because we initialize it outside of the for loop. But then each time in the for loop, each round through, we're going to advance that index by one. And we can do this using this like plus equals one sign. And so if I do this, what we're going to see is that we get the same thing we got before, but this was more complicated. And if we don't remember to advance the index or reinitialize the count, we can run into problems. If instead we use this, um, this enumerate, it makes things a lot easier. And so you might be wondering, why would you want to know the index or the count each time? And this can come in handy in a variety of different for a variety of different things. And so this is just a simple example where maybe you want to say when you have the first thing, you want to say what that thing, this first thing is thing. And then if it was, if you want the third thing, the third thing is, is and then the name of the thing. Um, and then for anything else, you're going to, just going to print thing. Um, so within the for loop, we often use conditional statements with like if, elif, and else. So if it's, you're saying, okay, so if you, when you're going through the loop, when you encounter this if, if the if the i is equal to zero, so you have to put double equal signs um, to say that something to test whether something's equal to something. Um, whereas if you have just a single equal sign, that's going to think that you're assigning a value. So it would be like you were assigning i to zero. So we can say if i is equal to zero, so this is going to be the first time through. So we're going to say the first thing is, and then have it print the thing. Elif, basically this is like a combination of else and if. So it's saying else, so if it's not zero, but it is two, then print um, the third thing is thing. And anything else, just print thing. 
And so what do we see when we run this is that's going to say, okay, the first thing is pipette. And that's just going to print out centrifuge because that was just an else. Um, and then the third thing is beaker. And then it's just going to print out flask. So remember, this is gets kind of confusing because Python is starting at zero. So you're having I equals zero when you're talking about the third first thing. If you want to simplify things for yourself or for other purposes, if you want to start at any other value, you can do that. And so basically here, as you just have to put start equals and then whatever value you want to start at. And so if I do the same thing, well, now my index is starting at one. So I have one pipette, two centrifuge, three beaker, four flask. And if I wanted to, if I did that same function without changing anything, well, now when I is equal to zero, it's not going to print out any there the first thing because the um the i is never equal to zero because we're starting at one. And now you can see that it's saying that the third thing is centrifuge when this third thing really is the beaker. And so if we wanted to actually do it the same way, the way that it would actually be, now here you would have i equals one and else i equals three. Um, or i equals equals one <laughs> and i equals equals three. Um, and so this is basically how you can do this and you can have it start at any value you want. And this can come in handy in a variety of different ways. A lot of times you want to do something in the first time around, maybe you're initializing something. Um, and then each of the further rounds, you don't want to do that. And so with using enumerate, you're able to say, okay, well, if this is the first one, then do this. Otherwise, do this other thing. And so enumerate is a really helpful that thing in Python. It's built in, so you don't need to import anything. And I hope you find it helpful.